Uh, this is my great and dear friend, Milana Lijinsky. And although she, her name is massacred on the schedule, uh, because I was because Michelle was having a travel day, and I didn't uh, I didn't run things by her, which is a huge mistake on my part. Uh, but uh, she is a treasure, and she is a person who has done those kinds of things that you think are not possible, because so many of us have other responsibilities. You know, everybody's uh, ideals are not the same. Everybody's goals are not the same. Um, my goal in life is not to free up as much time as possible uh, for, for different ideas because I am so passionate about doing what I want to do. I want to do it all the time. If I had another instant, I'd do it some more, you know. But in, in other cases, so many times, you know, and we all have these responsibilities in our life, right? We all have things that we need to do. And I met one of Milana's uh, things that she wants to do uh, personally. Uh, in the form of her son when I went to, to her uh, wonderful event, which she was so graciously uh, giving in giving to uh, Rhonda and Joel uh, this morning. Not giving. Uh, she gave it. They bought it. <laughs> uh, they got great value for that. But it was a wonderful, wonderful event. But, but what Milana has done is she has actually built a business that she really does run in a way that most people would consider uh, to be a part-time business. Um, and she's done it to massive success. And she does it with quality and she does it with integrity. And I can't say anything more about uh, uh, her than that. She's a wonderful person, a great friend, and uh, she'll be an inspiration to you. So please welcome Milana Lijinsky. Well, I thought I'd stay, stay here because it's, it seems a little bit too far away. I want to apologize. I'm going to have a cough drop in my mouth today, I'm just recovering from uh, bronchitis. In fact, I had to take a, an impromptu vacation to uh, the beach um, literally before I came here, hoping that the change of the uh, climate will help me, and it did actually. So um, thank you so much. This is my f fourth time attending the JVL Alert, first time ever speaking here, so I'm really excited. I know most of you at least. Uh, by face, a lot of you by name, and I'm just um, honored that you are sitting here in front of me, and I'm going to share with you a lot of value today. For those of you who are very new to me, I, I want to run real quick through my story, and people tell me it's unusual. I probably take it for granted, but until I actually start talking to people, um, let's see if it works for me, because it's mine. There we go. Well, I came to America in 1992, and uh, I actually don't like to fly, but this was one of the, those occasions where I couldn't help it. And um, this is actually me after 12 hours of three planes. And this woman is a sponsor who I thought it was in her teen years. She, turned out she was a 30-year-old woman, and I, that was the time I realized that American women, <laughs> women actually look much younger than their um, real years, which was my, my first big shock. Um, I studied English about three months before we left. Uh, it was like a crash course that uh, they did in a woman's apartment, and she would get you to repeat every single sentence after her. Hello, Mr. Smith. Hello, Mrs. Smith. How are you today? Great, thank you, and you? So we had to you know, recite the conversation to become very comfortable with English. Well, what we thought, we were actually going to Syracuse, and originally we didn't know that Syracuse is not a city, a Greek city in Sicily, but actually it's a city in New York State. <laughs> so that's where, that's where we landed, and that's why I spent my first seven years, went to college here. Um, I actually have a um, background in music education. I graduated by that time. I was already an accomplished classical musician. But music education here was a very different story, and I really couldn't find myself as a musician here. So, can I, can I, I'm sorry just to interrupt, but it, it will help. Um, if I speak. No, this this keeps hitting the microphone, and it's. This can go. Uh, I'm not attached to that. Is that better? Yeah, okay, great. Thank you. Um, 
if you know anything about Russian immigrants um, in the 90s, and I think it is true today, and Alexander will probably be, be the best resource to, to ask about that, but when we first came to the States, we had two obvious options. Either uh, to become uh, a nurse, that, that seemed to be like a growing profession, or uh, become a computer programmer. Now, what I found out about computer programming is that once you graduate, you can actually make $40,000 a year. Mm -hmm. That seemed like a lot of money to me back then. I remember we had a guest uh, sponsored um, meeting who was making $30,000 a year and he came to tell his story. It was a big, big deal back then. So $40,000 seemed like a lot of money for us then. By the way, what I skipped here, um, let's see if I can go back to it for a second. This is an article that was published about me in the paper. First of all, I never knew that this was so easy to get in the paper in the States. Uh, but this was an article uh, which is how I got my piano, which I still have 17 years later. And both of my kids play that same piano. Um, but they published an article, and if you can see in the corner, let's see if I can, right here, it says piano needed. And this nice gentleman uh, just gave a wonderful piano um, away. That was a mystery to me as well. So I could not understand why people would do that. Later, I found out this was for um, tax purposes, obviously. But the piano was wonderful, and I still treasure it um, every day. Um, so as I um, went into computer programming, I discovered web design on the last year of my college. Um, got a job as a web designer. My, my boss was extremely laid back, no management whatsoever. I could take three hour lunches and uh, it turned out to be a blessing because what, what I discovered on my, um, my job is um, Ken Evoy. Anybody knows Ken Evoy? Make your knowledge sell, site sell, make your site sell, make your price sell. And I actually won a product that he created called Make Your Knowledge Sell, which is about how to create ebooks and how to sell them online, how to make your brain food turn into money. It was wonderful. Um, and I created my first ebook, and the rest was history. I, that's how I entered the underground world of internet marketers, people who were making money online, amazingly. Amazingly, you just make money with a written or a spoken word. It was, um, it was very new to me, and I was just fascinated by that. Um, eight years later, just real quick, published a, an Amazon bestseller, um, how many people know Brian Tracy? Okay, and Jay Conrad Levinson, the guerrilla marketing. Yeah. I have to tell you a quick story. I asked for a testimonial from Malcolm Gladwell, uh, the author of The Tipping Point. And um, his assistant returned to me and said, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Gladwell only gives testimonials to his personal friends. And so I went to my mentor and I said, I don't know what to do. Well, go back to, to the assistant and ask, what does it take? to become his personal friend. Well, and this is the job of every mentor and every coach is to stretch. I didn't do that. I was far <laughs> from, from taking that step. Probably, you know, move to his city, take him out to lunch seven days in a row. I don't know what it would take, but I didn't do that. Uh, but I was fortunate enough to get both of these um, authors and uh, entrepreneurs to say yes to me for a testimonial. Now, this book is now considered number one recommended in the coaching industry. Um, as a business material. In fact, um, people ask me about this bracelet. The way I got this bracelet is, uh, who knows Joel Kahn? Joel Kahn is a known name here, the author of uh, Crack the Code. Um, he taught me that you never sell books at your events separately. You can sell them in a package, but you don't sell them separately. Um, so I didn't, I didn't want to sell my books. I didn't have any. You know, you have to carry the whole inventory, your boxes of books to an event, and it just didn't make sense. But this guy at my, at my event um, last year at the Coaching Super Summit came to me and said, Milana, I'll give you this chakra bracelet. <laughs> so he made an offer I couldn't refuse, and I just pulled out a book from my package and I gave it to him. Um, but this is, this is a great story for me to tell because, um, first of all, you, you don't sell books. For those of you who do events, uh, you have a bigger product or bigger offer to make at the end of your presentation for those of you who do sell from stage and, and speak at events. But second story is there is a way to get people to say yes, even if they would never say no in any other way. Um, so 
One of the things that Ken mentioned is that um, he was at my Coaching Super Summit, which is the only annual event that teaches how to make money in coaching. It's both for coaches and for entrepreneurs who do not, um, who are not yet familiar with the whole idea of coaching, how to turn that into uh, revenue. Coaching is really hot. Who knows what coaching is? Not a room full of hands. Okay. Well, you know, we can all argue about what coaching is, and, and the thing is that even professional coaches still argue about the definition. I'm just going to simplify it. Coaching is facilitating positive change, whether you do it through one-on-one -on -one work with somebody, group coaching, um, audio programs, home study courses, however you deliver that. It's facilitating positive change. For those of you who are not coaches, it's even um, a more tangible description of what coaching is. It's really implementation support. Let's say you say, sell a book, and people who read your book are so inspired they want to take action, and you don't offer coaching. Well, guess what they're going to do? They're going to find a coach who will coach people based on your book. You cannot hear me? <laughs> Oh, if you can hold questions to the end, that would be great. Yeah, actually, I'm going to be here on the break. So, uh, so coaching is really um, something that you can define your, yourself or uh, just jump in without any training, like many people do, and uh, support your customers. Or they will go somewhere else and find a coach who can support them on your product. So Frank is selling traffic guys. I don't know if he offers coaching program or not. Um, anybody who offers a... Um, relationship uh, book or audio program, you got to offer coaching based on your book. So that's basically what coaching is. And just a couple of pictures of people you might know. Uh, Tom Antian spoke at the Coaching Super Summit last year. Um, Kevin Nations and of course um, Ken MacArthur was uh, my guest of honor last year. And this is my son. My son is actually not that short. It's just Ken is that tall. <laughs> Um, I noticed that when we took the picture, when we printed this, it, it like it, it's, it did seem a, a little weird. Um, let me see if I can see. I grabbed Ken. Maybe not. <laughs> I think we had music on. <laughs> He's saying great things about the coaching program and and how um, the event went. Um, a couple of things that, I, before I jump into the, what I really want to show you, uh, share with you today is um, I really have not uh, been to the West Coast because I don't like to fly. And somebody said that they help people. Um, the water guy. There we go. <laughs> um, and I don't like to fly not because I'm afraid of dying or plane plummeting to, to the ground, but just I don't enjoy the, the whole experience of getting on the plane and getting motion sickness and all of those things. So the unpleasant experience connected to, to the um, travel. But for the first time this year, I actually visited the West Coast. I almost accepted the idea that I will never see Vegas, but I did. And I grabbed this nice and fat Elvis um, uh, and just had a picture with him. This is my mother. Uh, I actually got um, a limousine to t pick us up from the airport and pick us up from the uh, um, hotel because I knew that she would never pay for a limo service on her own. You know, be, coming where she's coming from, I know that she would never spend those $97 to ride in a limo. So I, um, and actually, because my dad doesn't fly at all, I don't know how we got him here. Um, she asked me to take a picture of her in the bathroom of Golden Nugget Hotel <laughs> so she could show it. To, to uh, my dad, uh, because she knew that he would never um, get there. So this, this was a special picture. Um, my life story probably wouldn't be complete um, without showing you this. Um, they can't hear the sound, but they are growling and they're playing. And this is the bliss in my life, other than my two children. There's a lot of fun. Um, I guess I should have turned the music off. but. Um, so, one, so what basically happened is that along the way, I had very little time to build my business and to run my business, to generate revenue. And I actually learned how to um, double your income and cut your work in half and make your business run without you. I was always focusing on creating free time. A lot of people are, for some reason, focused on creating more work, like getting more clients, more projects. I was always focused on keeping my calendar clear 
and um, just basically f having a lot of free time and generating a lot of revenue. And the way that you, you can do that is by focusing only on things that have high ROI, either today or later, as long as you know that that's what's coming, um, and focusing on something that Yannick already talked about, focusing on your unique ability, um, your natural ability. I, um, I call it your personal brilliance zone. When you're in the zone, you could do this forever, whether you're paid or not, uh, you don't notice time go by, and this is also where you make the most money, by the way. So if you don't know what your natural ability is, ask yourself what made you um, create the most cash in your lifetime, even. Whether you're still employed or you were recently employed, this is where you really make the most money, um, w when you are focusing on your natural ability. Um, Real quick, this is what's important. I think that for those of you who are starting out or for those of you who are growing your businesses, which is probably everybody in the room, uh, even if you're not looking for any ideas, the evolution of my business was very remarkable. Do you recognize the products? You bought them all? <laughs> well, year one, this is what I did. I created three products and I started where I was. A lot of people who are not yet um, in business, don't know where to start, I started exactly where I was web design. So all I was able to create are products about web design. How to create your first business website in 10 days, 65 instant web design answers, and how to install and troubleshoot CGI scripts. Uh, this was my specialty. I created the products in uh, six months. Um, and then I sold the reprint rights, actually master reprint rights, to a guy named Terry Dean. You guys know Terry Dean, right? Terry Dean? Yeah. Well, what he doesn't know is that the $1,800 that he paid me for that was my month worth um, salary. So we actually went out to celebrate, $1,800. It was a lot of money for me, um, 2000, 2001 or two, I forget, 2001. Um, so that, that was a really cool year. And I, I realized that, wow, I can create a product after product after product and make money. So the second year what happened, and this is a great lesson, and um, Jennifer was on a hot seat, and this is where I was really having a hard time um, picturing a fast track to your, to your success. And I could see you dragging it out when you could really do it fast. Um, year two, I discovered a niche market, <clears throat> and I created an association inside my market. So I chose coaches to be my market. Life coaches, business coaches, career coaches, wellness coaches, relationship coaches. So anybody who called themselves a coach or have, has gone through coach training, this is what I've done. I put together a website, filled it with resources that I've created over the last two years, and I called it the Association of Coaching and Consulting Professionals on the Web. And this was the best decision I've ever made. And I probably made it subconsciously. Coaches started hiring me to do their websites. I started asking, well, what is coaching? And they would tell me, and I said, oh, this is cool, interesting. And I started looking at other coaches' websites, spotting a lot of problems, a lot of issues. And so before I knew it, I was called a mega coach in the coaching industry without having any kind of coaching certification or training. How cool is that? So one lesson here, besides the fact that you want a niche as a fast track to your success, is create something that draws people in. I created an association. You could possibly create a resource center, um, an education center. But what was key here is that it was specifically for coaches. It wasn't just for women entrepreneurs or for women in general um, or for guys or, or, for, or for moms, God forbid. This is, you know, this is a very, very general market, very hard to market. to Everybody's trying to market to wham, you know, work at home moms. And it, it, sh it doesn't have the same effect than if you have a very specific industry group. So that was year two. Year three, well, I was making money with products, so I created more products. I created, launched, moved on. Created, launched, moved on. Before I knew it, I had 17 products on my virtual bookshelf. I had eBooks, I had CDs, audio programs, I had virtual events that I recorded. 17 products, and what I realized, I had to market every single product one at a time. And that just ate all of my time up. It was not really a way for me to run a business on five hours uh, a day. This is when I truly worked 10 to 12 hours a day. Um, and I realized that there's got to be a better way to generate revenue. How many people actually have a lot of products that they have to market one at a time? <coughs> it's tough. 
It's tough unless you have some way of connecting them and moving people along. And I will show you how you can do that. Uh, actually, kind of a um, side note real quick here. I just hired a marketing manager who came in into my business and said, well, wait a minute. You have this product, then you have this system, and then you have a gap here. What's happening here? Um, you know, I have a $20 book and then I have a $2,000 program. Um, and what happens is people really need a step-by-step -step material to learn from you, to be trained by you, to get to know and like you. And the most important thing is to experience small wins. And this is my mistake that I actually am sharing with you, being very transparent, is the mistake that I made is that I bundled all of my 17 products together into a $2,000 system which became of a, uh, something of a monster to sell. Trying to sell something that big with so many steps uh, is virtually impossible when people cannot get quick wins. Um, so I'm actually restructuring and rebundling re products which is making a lot of sense and a lot of people happy. Uh, because now they can say, okay, I want to build a list. You got a product for that? Yes. Um, I want to run teleclasses. You got a product for that? Yes. I want to write articles for money. You got a product for that? Absolutely. I can't find my niche. Do you got a product for that? Yes, here it is. So now I can match every product to a specific problem. Sells like this. So that's why, you know, the general success of the general systems are tougher to sell. Okay. So I realized that there was no passive income. I was working like crazy. Where's my passive income? And so I started looking for a better idea. Um, and it took me eight years to really find the model, the, the way to generate revenue um, in a way that the economy doesn't scare me, summertime doesn't scare me. Um, who, who here actually feels the hit of the economy? Like serious, I mean, we talk, we joke about that, but you guys feel that something is slowing down Thank you. What about summer and the economy together? Is summer usually a slow time for some of you? Well, it was for me, always, because when you sell products, people on vacation, they don't buy products. Something happens uh, in the economy, in politics, they don't buy products, they turn their attention elsewhere. So what I found is a different way, and I think <laughs> that those of you who are more advanced probably already know what I'm leading up to, but I'm gonna share that with you in a minute. Um, different ways to generate revenue that do not threaten your business uh, well-being and your well-being just because something happens in the world. You cannot rely on those external circumstances to support you. Um, and so I'm going to share with you in a minute what, what those are. Who remembers what happened in March 2003? I'm going to say politically. War. The U.S. invaded Iraq. A lot of businesses came to a halt, including mine, and I made exactly $500 that month. I panicked, I applied for a job locally, and my application was rejected. And thank God, obviously, but I'll tell you, I remember thinking this will never happen to me again. It's like the scarlet O'Hara with the carrot in my hand. This will never happen again. It was a very scary time. I really didn't want to go back to work, especially because that was my first year of being self-employed, completely self-employed, no job. Um, and it was a, just a really scary time. And so I found other ways to really um, generate revenue. As I'm sharing with you what I did, I want to share with you some lessons. These lessons are really important. Um, the one thing that I really learned is that nobody's business, um, nobody can tell you what kind of business to build for you. Uh, remember, I, I think I was, uh, when I was introducing myself, I shared with you that you want to keep your personal goals in mind. Um, about a year ago, I had to let my personal mentor go because his idea of making a million dollars was um, traveling around the country, attending networking events, introducing myself, um, and marketing myself that way. And in order for me to do that, I pretty much needed a wife. Now, he had a wife, <laughs> so that was not an issue for him. But to me, that business model didn't work. And so I had to let him go because the path was not there. So if you're following somebody right now, whether it's a mentor, whether you're actually paying that mentor or you're watching somebody's business model, 
think about the lifestyle that they're living. Is that the lifestyle you want to live? Because if it's not, you may not want to follow their business advice either. Okay. Uh, one of the things I noticed about a lot of information marketers is that the launch frenzy, launch after launch after launch. You launch a product, you take a break, you launch a product, you take a break, and it, it never ends. And we probably all got those emails where say, it's 3 a.m. in the morning, and I am writing you this email. I'm like, my God, go to sleep. <laughs> it's 3 a.m. in the, it's 3 o'clock in the morning, but the person is launching, they're excited, and it's, this is how they make money. And I didn't want to be doing that. I couldn't do that. I, you know, I like to sleep at night. So uh, just because somebody else is doing that does not mean that you have to do it uh, the same way. What is your personal goal? Is it, you know, if you're currently working, is it to replace your job income? Um, is it to stay home with your children? That was one of my goals. I really wanted um, to stay home with my then one-year-old. Couldn't find really good childcare, so that was a big issue for me. Um, is it travel the world? When um, Yannick was asking, what is your you know, life list? One of the things I really want to do is live one month a year in Europe. You know, just one city, Vienna. 2010, Paris, 2011, just kind of live there for a month, run my business from there, sort of like a mini uh, Tim Ferriss, you know, Tim Ferriss, the four hour work week. That is my, uh, definitely on my list. Um, is it possibly live and work anywhere in the world? Um, could it be sell your company for a lot of money? I mean, some of you are probably thinking about that already. Or maybe it's to start another business you've always dreamed of. So that's, that's uh, something that you really want to ask yourself, what is your goal? Um, for me, my goal was to go from this. This is my husband with a, a standing, fixing the tire of our very first car. I think this is Dutch called Vista, if I remember right. Car experts in the room, and it's all rusty. Actually, when we first came, we were not allowed to buy a car that was newer than six years old. So this is an eight-year-old Dutch called Vista. Uh, and this was back in 1993, and my dream was, to, to own a house like that, and this is my house right now. So it's, to me, that is my dream. It's probably a house that is actually a little better, a little more spacious than that, the one of my sponsor at the time. So to me, this is like the ultimate achievement. And I, you know, to some of you, it may be, uh, I can't even pronounce it, Lamborghini. I, I, I couldn't care less about fancy cars, but for some of you, it's important. For me, it's really the, beautiful surrounding inside my home. And that's what I achieved um, in 2006, actually. We were walking around the neighborhood with my husband, watching the, the development being built. And we couldn't afford it back then. It was 2005, just literally just starting my business up and slowly, slowly making very little money. And uh, then one day, it was 2006, and I said, you know what? I think we can afford it. And we went in, and uh, there were like three, um, slots left, and we got the one on the corner. Um, so while it was being developed, we still couldn't afford it until a little later into the development process. So what is your personal goal? It's not your mentors. It's really yours. And a lot of people are lying to themselves because they think, well, this is so successful. He's making millions of dollars. If I do that, I'll be so successful as well. But believe me, there are ways that you can be successful without sacrificing your personal goals or your family goals or your relationship or whatever else. And we had a lot of people talk about this, and I know Stephanie is going to be talking about that. And it's just kind of uh, when you are in the business, you hear this all the time. You know, keep your personal goals in mind when you're building your business. Um, I, I made a really big boo boo when I first started my business the create your first business website product. I don't know if you knew that, Mike, but actually, the entire product was built on a small software called Netscape Composer. Um, it consisted of video tutorials showing you how to use Netscape Composer to build your first website. By the, uh, now, the version that I was basing it on was 4.7, Netscape Composer 4.7. By the time I released the product, Netscape already came out with version 6. So guess what? <laughs> Three years later, um, this product is pretty much obsolete, unfortunately. Now, there's a lot of good information that's not video tutorials, but the, the, the core of the product, the USB, the, the thing that really made this product unique for me, you know, the video tutorials where I'm showing you and clicking and how to build your website, that part is gone. So 
create evergreen products. Uh, it basically means information products that are relevant today as much as they will be relevant in three to five years or longer. Um, I collect antique books. I actually scout eBay for some antique books where they, um, you know, something like self-improvement or willpower or how to become successful. And I have one from 1857. That is, when you read it, now, okay, it is old English. I have to kind of use my son's help to understand some of it. But essentially, it's the same stuff. 1857, that was before Civil War. Not much changed since then. And I have books from 1902, 1912, 1914. Um, the information is very much the same. So the secret to uh, evergreen products is to write about people, psychology, related topic, relationship, communication, something that has to do with people. Because people really, the core of people doesn't change. Culture might change, uh, gadget might change, but people really stay the same. And I, I have proof of that in the books from early 1900s. I kept turning the page, the cover, to see, is it really published in 1902? Impossible. So those kind of, and if you, even if you are in the business where you need to constantly update your product, you should have a product that has to do with mindset, with people, uh, with things about your type of people, um, your niche market. Whatever it is, it's a really good idea to have products that are evergreen if you can possibly pull that off in your um, business. No more standalone products. I shared with you that the 17 products that I had to market, oh, that was really, really tough. Um, I used to ask, you know, I used to say, oh, I have a great product idea. Just like Yannick, I would go, you know, get up in the morning or in the middle of the night, write down the idea. It was great. Next morning, I would come up with the actual product and ready to sell. Write a sales letter. It's, it's ready to go. Especially when you have a list, it's great. You, you, your mind works a little differently when you have a list versus when you don't have a list. You kind of, everything turns in your brain faster when you have a list because you know you have an audience ready to buy from you, so that's really great. Uh, but now I really ask, does it fit into my funnel? And does it have a self-driven marketing system behind it? I mean, I've looked at Traffic Geyser several times before I came here because I think it's, it's a really great product. Um, video really works. And if you can create a bunch of videos to market your product, and then your product markets the rest of your products, then you have a self-driven marketing system. In fact, one of the things that I teach actually in my programs is that you need to have at least one product that markets the rest of them. So for me, it's my book. I, you know, Coaching Millions, once people are in my funnel through buying Coaching Millions, that's how they get introduced to the rest of my products. Anybody feels like they have that one product that serves as an entry into their funnel? It's great because then you really need to market that one product, right? Instead of all 17, you know, the tail behind it. Create big ticket products. You know, if you want to create a million dollar business, it's really hard if you're selling $20 ebooks. It's really hard. $30 CDs, $20 ebooks. You want to create big ticket products. One of the things that I learned from my mentor um, is that. Big ticket products is not really about content. It's not about pulling all your CDs and all your prog uh, products and content together and selling for $5,000. It's really not about that. It's about the impact you're going to make on your customer through whatever experience you create for them. So that's why coaching is really hot, is because with coaching, you give people access to yourself. You create experiences for them. My mentor actually created um, things like a field trip. You know, He would take me with him while he was speaking on stage, uh, trying to break into the new market, selling from stage, then taking me behind the scenes, explaining to me what he did and why he did that. I mean, that is a high level experience, right? Would you say th so? This is something where you actually reveal the story behind the story and let your customer watch something like that. This is just an example. I mean, retreats, group programs, and I'm gonna show you some examples where you can charge $1,000 a month as a big ticket item, uh, and people will, happy, uh, happy, will be happy to pay that much money. Um, so less content, content, more impact. In fact, um, one of my clients told me, Milana, I am on an information fast. No input for me, just output. 
So she deliberately stopped buying and receiving emails and canceled a lot of her subscriptions so she could implement. We are so loaded with information right now, it's not even funny. And so if you let your people <clears throat> implement more and be loaded with content less, this is where you can charge a lot more money. Build a client pass. Remember I was telling you about how to connect all of your 17 products or however, however many you have in your business right now? This is what I'm talking about. It took me a while to get this. This is something, again, my mentor taught me. Um, this is where when a client comes to you, you know exactly, after five minutes, you know exactly what product to recommend to them. There's no question about that. Not only that, your client knows to come back to you for the next step. So a client path is basically a series of products, programs, and services designed to help you, your clients grow from one level to the next and help you increase the lifetime of your client. Uh, if you have just a couple of products, well, people will buy it and they'll say goodbye. They'll move on. They'll keep looking somewhere else for the next product. Um, <clears throat> I sell to coaches. This is my market. Um, coaching entrepreneurs, people who want to coach, coaches who've completed their training. And I used to say, I don't want to work with newbies. I want people to come to me and they're ready to go, they're ready to rumble, they're ready to build an empire. What I found, though, is people wanted information for newbies. They were newbies, and I was pushing them away. So that's my mistake number two that I'm sharing today with you. If you have people who are coming to you and they're asking for very specific information and you're saying, I'm sorry, we don't work with people like you, or I'm sorry, we don't have a product like you. The next time somebody approaches you with that question, think about it. Should, is it does it make sense for you to create something like that or offer it? So um, have a, an A to Z product line, and that is one way to dominate your market, is when you have everything that you can possibly offer to the same group of people. Um, delegation is not an expense. Uh, this is something I learned when I, I spent my vacation uh, in an internet cafe fixing my program that was shut down by some hackers and my ISP, ISP um, my hosting company shut down my program, my website entirely because somebody was using it to send millions of emails or something. So I spent uh, my week uh, in Wildwood, New Jersey in an internet, internet cafe trying to fix the problem. So after that I learned my lesson and I hired an assistant um, today I have about anywhere between 7 and 11 people working for me based on the time of the year and what I do, programs or events or products or anything like that. Uh, but it's actually, um, delegation is an investment. And it, it's really hard to hire somebody at $40 an hour when you're not making a lot of money yourself. It's, it's a scary decision and I remember feeling that way. Why would I hire somebody to submit my articles or to update my website when I can do this myself? It's, it's a really tough decision to make and it doesn't make sense to you at the time. But what happens is you really um, free your energy and you free your time to do something that is in your natural ability, your unique ability, your, your personal brilliance zone, okay? Um, everybody has their own criteria, this is mine. Could someone else do it better and faster? If the answer is yes, I delegate it. Could you pay someone to do it for less money than your hourly rate? So if you're a consultant, you're charging $100 an hour or more, and you are still licking your stamps or recording your bookkeeping stuff, then this is, these are the things that you need to delegate. You're, you're basically um, not getting a high <coughs> ROI on, on your activity. Um, and then do you absolutely dread doing it yourself? In fact, I think this should be the first one. Because if you dread doing it yourself and you're still doing it, imagine what it does to your energy every day. The first thing I delegated or outsourced um, was uh, hiring a bookkeeper and then an accountant. I don't want to see accounting or bookkeeping. I want to sign the checks. I want to look at them, sign the checks, and send them to my people. I don't want to deal with any, anything else in the accounting. And if you don't like that either, then this is what absolutely should go first. Um, know your natural ability. Uh, we, we, re we talked about that. If you don't completely love doing it yourself, then you have three options. Automated, delegated, or eliminated. Delegating is obviously hiring somebody. Automating is you know, using software or automating the process somehow uh, by using a combination of software and people. Uh, and eliminating, ask yourself, do you even have to do that? Does it produce results? Um, so know your natural abilities. Who gets a lot of email, like really daily overwhelmed with email? 
Okay. Yeah. Would you like to know how to stop that? There are very effective ways to do that. I went from, I don't know, a thousand emails a day to about 25 to 30 daily right now. So here, here are the steps I took. Um, first of all, get a help desk. Uh, anybody heard of Kayako.com? Anybody's using Kayako.com? It's a really cool software. I know there are some other packages, but this is the one I use and I love it. This is where you can actually create a ticket system and people who come to your website can submit a ticket and you can respond to it. The best thing I like about it, there are a couple things I like about it. First of all, when you respond to a ticket, it saves it in your knowledge base. So the next time you try to answer the same kind of question, you can pull it up from your knowledge base. Uh, and it also creates the FAQ, you know, the frequently asked questions. The second thing is you can delegate, you can assign who receives those tickets. I don't ever see any support anymore. Um, two of my assistants handle support. And depending on which product the, the ticket is, be, uh, is uh, focused on, a certain assistant receives that email. So that was step one, is to get a help desk and channel the emails to one or two different people. Um, the second piece was, let me see if it's on here. Oh, maybe it's not. Um, the second thing is get a Gmail account. If you're not using Gmail, you really need to start doing that. Who is here still on AOL? Nobody, good. Um, well, first of all, AOL really um, screen, uh, blocks a lot of emails. I think Tom Antion was talking about it. Out of 1,200 emails, 70 were blocked. All 70 were AOL based. Um, so you gotta, gotta switch if, you, if you're still using it. Um, once you open the Gmail account, if you're not using it, delegate all your email to uh, your virtual assistant or an assistant, depending on how you operate right now. If you've been answering your own emails and you're probably thinking, well, my assistant couldn't know what to tell my customers, right? I mean, that's the usual mentality here. It's like, she doesn't know what to answer. How would I possibly trust her to respond to my customers' emails? If you're truly overwhelmed and if you truly want to um, stop this problem once and for all, get uh, all of your sent emails on a CD, send it to your assistant, and have her or him dig through it and categorize it and index your responses however you want to. Um, and immediately channel your email to your assistant. When he or she gets the email that they don't know what to do with or don't know how to respond, they'll get back to you, you'll tell them how to respond, and you'll move on. But if you keep answering yourself, you're digging a deeper hole. I hope that makes sense. But you know, those steps, Kayako, Gmail, and putting my assistants on the email, just solve my problem. I'm literally getting about 25 emails that I actually have to respond to. Um, this is a big one. This really changed my life. And if you can uh, anticipate, this is exactly what I was talking about earlier, is that this one piece, forget everything else I said, this one piece is going to carry you over slow months in the summer. This is going to carry you over a uh, bad economy or anything else. Um, who has a continuity income stream? Every month money is coming in no matter what. Wow, we have a great advanced audience. Can you raise your hands higher? Congratulations, very cool. I love seeing that. Um, what this does, when you have a monthly income coming to you on a regular basis, it creates that stress-free peace of mind that even if you get sick or you don't want to work or something else is happening in your life, it's okay. The money will still come in. And that's the liberating uh, thing that uh, I just love about that. No more slow months. You know, um, my slow months used to be summer and then Christmas time, right? Because usually people don't buy ebooks on Christmas. They buy gifts and Christmas presents and stockings and, you know, those really popular um, holidays and vacation months were really scary for me. Not anymore. Um, opportunity and freedom to build any kind of business. I just uh, finished an event called The Bliss Factor in April, and I had no idea if it's going to make money or not. I just wanted to play with the idea. I was really fascinated by the idea of, you know, creating the bliss in your life and but when I was talking to you, Jennifer, I was talking from personal experience that the general success type doesn't really sell. But I had 
the luxury of being able to take that risk and went with it anyway, while my, the rest of my business was still making money, I played with this idea. No, it did not make money, <laughs> by the way. Uh, not a lot of money anyway, not enough to cover me. So I was thankful for having other income streams throughout those four months that I was promoting that event. Um, you don't have to work every minute of every day. This is where a lot of information marketers just fall into a trap. They feel like they have to produce. Um, they have to constantly be at their computer. And if they're not, the money is not being made. It's almost like that mentality where you trade time for money, but it's really not. Uh, you're not really consulting or coaching for on an hourly basis. You're pretty much feeling like you have to do something to move your business forward. With continuity income streams, recurring income streams, you don't have to feel that way. Um, work is optional. You don't have to show up to make money. Um, and this is the best way to create stability in an economy. One of the things that I teach uh, my clients is that when you create a reoccurring income stream, your goal is to create something that it, when it shows up on your customers or your subscribers' credit card statements, it is insignificant to them. It is insignificant to even wonder about what it is. Maybe it's $9.95 a month. Maybe it's $14.95 a month. Maybe it's $29.95 a month. Whatever that pricing structure you decide to go with, it's not even important enough for them to pick up a phone and find out what is it I'm, am I paying for. But it's significant to you because you've got hundreds of subscribers or members. And that is the best way to really feel great in any economy or during any slow months. Um, and it's the easiest way to accumulate cash and wealth. Now, um, one of the people who was going to speak here, but he's not here, is James Malachik. Um, he actually shared with me that when there's a lot of women in the audience, you need to show pictures and tell stories. When there's a lot of guys in the audience, you need to show numbers. So I'm kind of doing both, if that's okay with you. I just want to sh share with you the evolution of what happened. This is 2004 for me. <clears throat> I had no reoccurring income streams. And if you are using OneShoppingCart.com, this is basically a screen from that. Um, $49,000, a little bit with change. All product sales. Um, 2005, this is when I started continuity income, uh, uh, continuity income programs. Uh, membership sites, coaching clubs, web-based software. I'll share with you how you can do the same in just a minute. But do you see how it skyrocketed? I mean. The number of sales in January, in February, in December, in August, there are no slow months. And this is what I was really trying to achieve in my business. Um, 2006, it continued to grow. There are more people subscribing. This is the best part about subscription is that once people start subscribing, even if there is a you know, sort of turnover, you'll always have more subscribers than unsubscribers because you continue to market the site or, or, or the program. And that's what happens with you. 2007, I started using another shopping cart, so it's sort of like a combined income. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Infusion, but it's the, the second uh, generation, the next generation uh, shopping cart. So this is a combination of both here. So it continues to grow, and what I love, what I love seeing about this is that there are no slow months. Summer doesn't scare you. Um, Christmas time doesn't scare you. Um, Economy really doesn't scare you. I mean, I, I realize that this is very real for some people. At the same time, when you have subscription-based income, it does not make a significant impact on your bottom line. And that's, that's all I wanted to show uh, you in, as far as that. OK, I'm going to share with you two continuity income streams. If you don't have one, please take notes. This is where you really want to start taking notes. The easiest monthly income ever is, anybody knows what I'm going to say? Take a guess. Membership. Membership. Coaching. Coaching. Tools. OK. So Rhonda was the closest one. Web-based tools. Very good. I don't have a prize. Sorry. I got your prize oh, you got my prize already. Great. So when I say web-based tools, I actually mean web-based software. A good example of that is Frank's um, Traffic Geyser. Basically, the software does the work. People subscribe to it every day. Right? Stay there. And they stay there. And the stickiness of a tool is amazing. Now, I have two tools. One is called Assessment Generator. Another one is called Group Coaching Manager. I'm not going to bore you with details of what they do. 
you're welcome to check those out. Assessment generator and group coaching manager. They're both for coaches or for people who lead group programs uh, or for people who are looking to generate leads with uh, quizzes and self-assessments. But the point is that once people start using it, they don't cancel. It's the best thing in the world. They just don't. They make it a part of their business and they don't. If you're not working with business owners, you're working with individuals, so you are B2C kind of business, there are tools that you can create for your market, and I'll show you how to go about creating something like that in a second. Um, what happens is you set it up once, you outsource tech support, and you get monthly income. And this is really what allows me to work only four or five hours a day, is that I don't mess with the product that I set in place. Um, my virtual assistant is trained on this tool, so now she can answer any questions. Um, a little side note here is that my virtual assistant is also a partner, so she gets 30% from every sale that we generate. This allows me not to pay her for her hourly um, uh, support and instead makes her a full partner, very passionate partner, somebody who will come up with an idea and say, Milana, what if we do this? What if we fine tune the, the offer? What if we change the, what if we create a tutorial? So she's really invested into that tool. Um, so this is really, the, the reason I say that this is the easiest one is I don't even touch it. <clears throat> and a lot of people, even Dan Kennedy actually said that he will not touch the software. You know, he'll say something like, well, you lost me when you said software. You know, the top guru, the top dog in the information marketing world, he does not touch the software because it sounds too techy. But the truth is, you don't need to know a single line of code. This is all you need to know. Rentacoder.com. This is where I get all my software, all my tools done. Now, Frank probably has uh, an in-house uh, team. I don't know how you got that program developed. It seems very elaborate. I, I got pretty much all of them through Renacoder originally. Uh, originally. And this is the great starting point because a lot of people on Renacoder um, are from other countries. They will work uh, very, for very little money. So I got most of my software developed for under $500. Yes. And just to give you um, kind of a point of comparison, the $500 tool that I paid to get developed is giving me right now $2,000 every month, every single month. So you can develop something very inexpensively, and this is the way to go. And by the way, this is like Elance, but it's filled with programmers, uh, where people from all over the world will bid on your project. You'll choose them based on their ranking, on the type of projects they selected before, you know, um, the, the customer ranking, and so on. Uh, sure. Your, your success with Metacoder is going to depend 100% on how well you can lay it out beforehand, spec it out. So that yeah, can... because the, the programmers really don't design your software. You right. do. You come up with the idea and the concept. You tell them what to program, right? I actually, what I like to do is I draw screens. And I say, okay, this is my screen one, two, and three. Exactly. This is how I want people to see. And, you know, it's, it's the concept. Now, you may not even have to do that. You just have to come up with the idea and maybe work with somebody to come up with those screenshots, but the idea must be yours, and I'll show you how to come up with that. Um, how do you come up with a great idea for a profitable web-based tool? Who is interested in this, just so I, I see that? Okay, thank you. So, ask yourself a couple different questions. What would simplify people's lives in your niche market? Something that they're doing that is hard they're dreading, what would simplify? I, this is a very obvious question, but really ask yourself, what would simplify people's lives in your niche market? The second question is, what do they constantly complain about? What do they constantly complain about? What do they find annoying? That's a good one, actually. I found it annoying that when people came into my life as, as potential clients, they um, had no clue about what I did or about uh, what I teach. They were just kind of emailing me as a part of their search for a coach. And 
so there, were no, there was no screening process whatsoever. And so I developed assessment generator. They have to fill out a form. Uh, they have to score in a certain way. And the, the, the score results would be, dis would be dis displayed right on the page. And it would tell them, um, you know, thank you. I would love to work with you. Please contact me here. Here's my number. Or um, the best way for you to proceed would be to invest in this product before you come to me. So in other words, it allowed me, it, it, I found this annoying, and therefore I was able to solve that problem by creating a tool. Um, let's see, I think there's one more question. What do they have to deal with on a regular basis? That's a fourth question. What do they have to deal with on a regular basis? And you know mar your market like no one else does. This is why it's great to have a market, a, a specific niche, is because you can really visualize that person, that one person in your niche market that is struggling all the time. And also, what would save them a lot of time? So if you ask yourself these questions, I don't know if you guys meditate, but this would be a good uh, sheet with questions to take in, with you uh, on a park trip. Just sit and, and think and, and do a little bit of, um, I don't know, fantasizing about what could possibly be the answer to these questions. Okay. Okay. Um, some examples. Tracking tools. Can you help your clients track something? These are the easiest ones. These are really like almost like spreadsheets, but they're web-based, and maybe they can save information and go back to it over time. Accountability tools to help them be accountable to somebody, to something, to themselves, to you. Screening or pre-qualifying tools. Community building tools. Nobody can beat Facebook, but hey, there are many Facebooks popping up everywhere around the net today. Need more ideas? Go to milanarecommends.com. The reason I want you to go to that website is, first of all, this is my entire toolbox. I, I shared that with my list recently um, as something that, I mean, it's really a comprehensive list of everything I use to run my business. Somebody's taking a picture of that list. I love that. <laughs> That's very smart. Never thought of that. Instead of taking all the notes that you guys are taking, this is great. Um, the other reason I want you to go there is because a lot of these tools are web-based subscription tools, shopping carts, autoresponders, traffic tracking software. I mean, all of these will hopefully give you more ideas. Was that helpful? Yes. Thank you. Good, Thank you. good, great. Now, that was the easiest income stream ever. The most profitable monthly income ever is, I heard that before from somebody, coaching. Who said that? Yes, we have people here saying coaching. Coaching, but with a twist. Um, actually, coaching clubs. So a coaching club is basically a combination of a membership site and a mentoring program, uh, especially for those of you who couldn't stand the idea of working with clients one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, this is a great alternative and still making a lot of money. So membership site plus mentoring program. Here's a more uh, descriptive explanation. So a coaching club is a niche specific. And notice I highlighted the words niche specific. Membership-based mentoring program where participants gain access to a community of peers, content, model, tools, inspiration, and implementation support to advance the most important goals. Okay, I'll show you a couple of different models where you can charge anywhere between, uh, you know, twenty-five dollars a month and a hundred dollars a month and a thousand dollars a month. Okay. Um, coaching clubs are very scalable. In other words, you can get as many members as you want. The workload uh, does not change. Well. Yes and no, actually, here. It depends on what you offer. But for the most part, like in any membership site, you can get as many members as you want, and your workload does not change. It's easy to set up and run. These are the three tools that I use to set up a um, coaching club 
um, or for that matter, any membership site. Now, I could go into more detail and get you all confused and complicated information, but to be honest with you, these three tools, and Blistcard is just my version of the oneshoppingcard.com, but uh, these three tools is all you really need to set up a membership-based um, coaching club or coaching program. WordPress is going to allow you to manage your content, post some information. A member is going to allow you to have member accounts so people can come in and choose their username and password. And then Blizzcard or One Shopping Card is going to allow you to take payments and on, uh, automatically reoccurring payments. So this is really all you need. Very easy to set up. I know there is a lot, a lot of elaborate software out there. But if you are on a poor Richard's budget, if you don't want to invest a lot of time or money, this is the way to go. Um, and anyone can do it. I know that uh, there's a lot of um, conversation about, well, what if I'm not a coach? What if I don't have coaching, coach training or certification? Um, am I, can I do a coaching club? Let me tell you, there is a coach in every industry, in home inspection, in dental market, in real estate, many of them in real estate, um, in executive, in uh, business, uh, in manufacturing. Uh, uh, there's just every industry has their own coach. And if they don't yet, I'm sure it's open for grabs. So anybody who is in a, uh, my, uh, my client recently went into a physical therapy market as a business coach. And she was stunned to find that there were no other coaches coaching physiotherapists on business building, time management, uh, staff training, and personal coaching. So coaching is still very new. It's hot, and it's very new. So if you are in a market where you don't know if there's a coach um, operating already or not, grab it. Even if there is, great. People are already familiar with that. Um, OK, a highly profitable. Uh, here's an example of a two-tier coaching club. Uh, if you have 100 members, can you easily get 100 members? I mean, is that a very big number? Frank, how many members do you have? Is that? Uh, more than 100, OK, thank you. Well, um, 100 members is really, really easy to get within 30 to 90 days, depending on what you do, who you do it with, and you know, how aggressive you are as a marketer. But let's say 100 members. Does that sound realistic, something you can get, 100 members? OK, so let's say that 75 members pay you $97 a month. That's a little over $7,000 a month. And then you have a higher level. 25 members are paying you $197 a month. So adding a little bit under $5,000. That is a total monthly income of $12,200, right? And it's a total annual income of over six figures. So theoretically, if you did only this, if you only ran your coaching club and your goal was to have six figures, that's all you would need to do. And you actually can run a coaching club like this on two days a week and take the rest of the time off. So uh, very, very lucrative. Uh, let me show you a couple of examples. So let's say that you're charging $97 a month. What could you offer? Well, you could offer a monthly teleseminar. Monthly teleseminar is really about um, you either train somebody or you invite a guest speaker, whatever it is you want to do as a monthly call uh, to, to, to touch your members every month. Uh, monthly print newsletter or maybe a Q&A call. Uh, in fact, what I did in my coaching club was I would hold a training session on Tuesday and a Q&A session on Thursday of the same week, and then no calls for the rest of the month. And people loved it because it gave them an opportunity to learn one day. Two days later, they would generate some questions for me, and we would go from there. Uh, what else could you offer at this price? Um, member forum, um, maybe discounts on products, programs, and events. These are not your VIP members, but they're enough to... Um, you know, get people excited and, and stay with the program. Now, $97 seems like maybe a lot of money for somebody to pay, unless it's a niche market, unless it's a peer group. Remember that people want to feel like they're constantly in touch with their peers and their niche market and their community. This is what people will pay for. Um, another example is $1,000 a month. Who wants to do a $1,000 a month coaching club? Yeah. yeah, sounds great. Well, I have to tell you, I paid $2,500 a month to my most recent mentor in whose club, coaching club I was. So $1,000 a month is not a lot of money to get somebody to pay. Here's what you could offer. A monthly teleseminar, a monthly call-in day. This is where your members actually get to call you on a sp during a specific time that you say, let's say, every 
uh, second Tuesday of every month, you are going to or keep your line open from 10 to 2 for four hours a month. And people can call you. And if they can't reach you, that's fine. If they can reach you, they can talk to you. Uh, um, they can ask you a specific question, get some laser um, time with you, laser coaching. Uh, you want to teach your people to ask a very specific question because there's only 10, 15 minutes with you. So that's another component you can offer. Um, quarterly live mastermind group. So this is where you actually meet with people in person. You can do it maybe four times a year or three times a year. It's up to you how, you, how people perceive that $1,000 a month value. But this is a component that can also be uh, inside your coaching club. And then VIP treat, treatment at events. So uh, my, my coaching club members will get uh, you know, special access to a VIP lounge at my coaching super summit this year. Uh, they'll get uh, some baskets or they'll actually, uh, they will not have to pay to attend the event. So you get them something extra that nobody else gets, you know, sort of a VIP treatment. Um, and then free access to other products and other membership sites that you may have. So a VIP client, you know, the $1,000 a month coaching club, that really gives you an opportunity to give them everything you got. They pay you $12,000 a year, you might as well. Okay. There are some mistakes that people are making over and over again, and I just want to briefly run through them. How are we doing on time, by the way? 12 minutes? 20 minutes. Okay. Um, choosing the wrong topic. Um, the very first time I started my membership site, um, I actually called it Association of Solo Professionals on the Web. And if you tried to pronounce it as the abbreviation, it didn't come out very nice. So I had to change it. And no matter what, how I pronounce it, people still pronounce it wrong. Uh, but the point I was trying to make is that solo professional is really not a niche. Everybody is a solo professional, a dog groomer, a massage therapist. They're all solo professionals, so I had to change it. Um, there is a website out there, or there was, I don't know if it still exists, on stress management. It's just not the topic where you can get the most buck for your effort. So you really want to choose a topic that um, brings an audience together, a specific group together, like dentists, like um, real, realtors who specialize in a particular type of uh, property. Um, so you, you get the idea. Basically, choosing the wrong topic is going to cost you a lot of money, create a lot of frustration. So be careful where you focus your attention in the membership site or coaching club. Um, giving too much content or adding too many bells and whistles. Many times I see people load their membership site or coaching club with so much stuff, it's not even funny. And people really don't know how to consume it all. And so they do what? Nothing. They cancel. They cancel because it's too much. They cannot consume all the information you're providing them with. Therefore, they're feeling like they're wasting their money. And they, they unsubscribe. Uh, there's a very well-known guy who runs a very well-known forum who decided to open such a program. I'm not going to say his name, because probably most of you know him. Um, I unsubscribed within three weeks. The guy was just sending me videos, webinars, weekly. It's like, whoa, 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 hold, hold your horses. I haven't even had a chance to review everything you sent me last week. So that was just a little bit too much. And also, when you include uh, too many bells and whistles, people are missing the core offer. So what is the core offer? In a coaching club, at $1,000 a month, it's usually that uh, quarterly mastermind. This is like what people really, really appreciate having. Monthly teleseminars, uh, I mean, this is something great for people to get in touch, but that's the, the, the quarterly live meeting of members is what people really appreciate. So don't, guess your, don't get your main offer lost in, in the crowd, in the, in the stuff, in the pile of all the other things you're offering. Um, and then trying to create all content at once or waiting too long to start. Uh, when I created, created my very first coaching club, I had no content for that club. All I had, take notes here, for those of you who are really into, oh, I got to get everything perfect and got to get everything on the website. All I did was creating 12 topics that I'm going to cover over the next 12 months. And I launched my coaching club. 
I had 33 members at $147 a month. And for 12 months, that's what I was running. Every month I would create a topic and I would record it for, with people on the line. Here's the best part though. Uh, then I decided to stop my coaching club because I ran out of topics and I kind of lost my passion for that particular venture. I turned those 12 modules, 12 topics, into a program. And I started selling the program. So guess what? I actually was, I got paid for the same material twice while I was creating it and after it was completed. That's the ultimate product development strategy, is you get paid while you're creating it, possibly as a coaching club format, and then once you package it and sell it as a standalone product, or as a, I don't want to use standalone because that's not the word you want to <coughs> incorporate into your business, um, as a separate product. Um, I put together some tools and resources for you. I mean, are people interested in creating their own membership sites and coaching clubs? Yeah. 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 Um, I'm, I basically put together a package and I have it here. Um, I have nine more copies in the back, making money with coaching clubs and membership sites. Um, you actually get coaching club secrets. Wow, this is the best I've, I've heard myself when I uh, lowered my, my voice here. Um, this is everything you need to know about coaching clubs, P why people join, what to include, the different business models, the different pricing uh, models, um, how to add more value without adding more time. This is everything that you need here. If you are new to membership sites uh, or if you just want to brush up on different business models, um, pricing, content, growth strategies, everything you really need to know about membership sites, this is all in here. Um, Michelle, if you could just pass around those forms for people who are interested, that'd be great. Um, there is a whole package of CDs. This is a bit more advanced, so this is really uh, a lot of the information. There are 12 CDs inside, plus I believe there is a bonus CD with five types of monthly income streams. Literally everything I know about membership sites and coaching clubs, and I ran about seven of them, and I've closed about four of them, and three are continuing to run very profitable. So this is really everything you need to know about membership sites. Um, how to make money with coaching. This is a very special guide. Now it's thin, but there's gold in there. And the way I developed it is basically I want it for people who are not coaches to be able to make money with coaching like this really fast. So it includes 18 ways to start selling coaching in the next 24 hours. Uh, 42 things you need to know about creating and selling high-end coaching programs. Um, and then finally, how to run coaching programs even if you're not a coach. So this is really, um, this is gold mine for those of you who are really interested in coaching. And not as a professional coach, but rather as an add-on to your existing business. Of course, the football phone. <laughs> Everybody always wants a book, so it is going in there. Uh, yes, you can buy it on Amazon, but I will include a copy for you here. Um, so the total value of that is $13.43. Uh, I want to throw in something that if you really want to go uh, into the whole idea of coaching as a money-making opportunity, I want to invite you to attend the Coaching Super Summit. It would be included in the price of uh, the f everybody has a form to look at. Um, so the event is actually $795. This is the only event where you get to learn how to make money with coaching. There's nobody else is doing it. There is uh, an ICF organization, uh, International Coach Federation. They have a, an annual conference on coaching. Uh, what you get there is completely different um, information. You get things like, you know, um, how to use assessments and coach training schools and all of that is something that I find is completely uh, not interesting to business owners who just want to get to the bottom of it fast. So this is the only event that's going to show you how to do that. Um, the JV Alert pricing is $14.97. I know so many of you, and I consider so many of you fr uh, my, my friends, that I just fell, I, I went upstairs and I actually changed the price to, let's see if it's there, for $6.97. If you want to get this whole package today, 
Michelle has nine copies in the back of the room. Just fill out your form. Please write clearly. Uh, also indicate how you want to pay one option, one pay option, or two pay. Um, and Michelle will take care of you in the back and it will actually hand you the package. So please um, uh, write down your information clearly. Um, I do want to answer literally two questions. So if you have a question, just raise your hand. I think I still have 15 minutes. Do we have a mic? See, that will get your attention, Ken. <laughs> yes. What's your question? My question is, what makes a good, uh, I guess, backbone for your business to be able to then jump in? Like, let's assume you have no business, you're looking to start something. Um, I know there's a lot of people that are in that area waiting to start, but let's say, how can you find a good niche or a good market to jump into to sell a good flagship product to start building you know, the backbone of your, the foundation of your business and create your marketing funnel and then back end people into a high end uh, coaching program? Is that a big question? That's it a is a big question. Questions. Like how do you build a whole business from the ground up? I'm going to answer it with one comment here because I believe that that's most important. Now we talked about the niche, so I'm going to leave that out. Niche is very important. If you really want to do it fast, start with the niche. And to me, a niche market is simply a group of people who already exist, so they're easy to reach. If you're trying to create your own market, it's going to be very tough. It's going to take you a while. So you want to start where you are. You want to find a group that already exists and market to them. The second piece of that is having a very solid core message. Some people will call it, I don't even want to say that it's an elevator message because it's really not. Your core message is something that makes you different from your competition. For example, for the longest time uh, working with coaches, I, I see all these people selling to coaches and I'm selling to coaches also business building programs and I ask myself, well, well why should they buy from me? How am I different? And when I asked that question, I realized that I'm not teaching coaches how to build a practice. I'm really not. Now, you will build a practice if you choose to, but what I'm really doing is I'm teaching coaches how to build a multiple income stream business. And that's very different. That became my core message and my USP, uh, if you choose to call it that way. So your core message is very important. And you ask me, the backbone of your business, that is the backbone of your business. There is no business if there's no core message, especially if you're building a training or coaching or um, you know, company where you sell information in any format. Okay, is there another question I just saw? Um, thank you. Take this question and we'll go on a break. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Joey. Love hey, Joey. the stuff you, I mean, opened up a lot of my my cool. stuff here. Um, I've been a coach uh, online for the last eight months, and I have a member site already uh, for about 500 members or so. Mm -hmm. But it's a free membership site, basically, on how to you know market online and how to do stuff on any niche. But I did the same thing like what you what you did here. Mm -hmm. You created a live you know thing every single. I was doing it every week, and now it's a program. But how do, I, and how do I turn that free membership site, because it's a free membership site now, how do I turn it into a paid, you know, right. paid, ad, uh, paid membership site? Before a lot that's, of that's where I'm having trouble right now, is how to convince these guys that are getting it free right. to start paying me. I know a lot of people who are experts and were on the, on the panel are probably jumping at the chance to answer that. I'm just going to uh, answer your Thank question. You. The, what I usually, uh, and this is a very good question, uh, a free membership site uh, can be used as a list building tool. So if you start marketing that site more aggressively with the purpose to build a list, you'll do really great, considering that there is a... Right. So, so everything you do, all your efforts, all your marketing efforts, all your traffic generating efforts should be focused on bringing people to that site and getting them to sign up. Um, there is an upgrade that you can offer once they sign up. Would you like to get also this and this and this, all you need to do is upgrade your membership to $9.95 a month. Um, oh, you can, you can absolutely launch it to your current members. Right. Hi, dear Jane, uh, this month I decided to um, start offering X. 
uh, if you'd like to take advantage of that, only because you're a current member now, you get this at a special price. Everybody else will get it at you know, X price times two or whatever. Uh, but what I, one of the strategies that is very popular, and I forget who created that, and um, basically you take a free membership site, people subscribe to it, then you immediately make an upsell then you, uh, of a product, then you immediately upsell them into a paid membership site. It's like a multi-step uh, membership program where you get the most buck from one membership site by doing a two-step upsell. So um, anybody remembers who does that? Or is it? Mike Fulsame has that. I mean, is that Butterfly Marketing? That's pretty much what it is, yeah. Thank you so much, everybody. You've been a great audience. I really appreciate it. Thank you.